How's it going YouTube? I got a special video for you today. I've made plenty of videos in the past of how to properly set your gains, specifically by using just your ears. However, for those of you out there that may not be comfortable doing that, I've had a lot of comments and concerns about people that aren't comfortable or maybe aren't familiar with setting gains using your ear to detect distortion. Well, I tell you what, I got great news for you. You can use a cheap $40 oscilloscope from Amazon and set your gains like a pro. No need to spend hundreds of dollars on more expensive gear. This will get the job done and I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, guys, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe down below, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any future content to help you take it to the next level. Let's get loud. All right, so before we set the gains, you gotta make sure to take care of some stuff up here at your head unit first. You wanna make sure to get everything set properly how you plan on listening to your music. I mean, get your equalizer setting set up properly. As you can see, I'm using the smiley face method. I have a complete video dedicated on how to set your graphic e equalizer to maximize your sound quality and output. Make sure to check out my channel for that video. And then also you wanna make sure that your subwoofer level and also your loudness settings are how you intend to listen to it. Reason being is last thing you wanna do is set your gain with your loudness off and then later decide to turn your loudness setting to low or high, because what's gonna happen then is you're gonna send a clip signal out and you're gonna distort your speakers and bad things are gonna happen, okay? So I always leave mines off, so that's not a concern. Subwoofer level, again, I always max mines out. Reason being of why I do that is so that it's just to play it safe. So that way, let's say I leave it on eight, but I want it a little bit louder, so I treat it like a volume knob, which you should never do, and I turn it up to 10, well, guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and distort my speakers. So I always max that out, I leave loudness off, and uh, you know I always get all this set up. All right, so something else here very important is to make sure your volume is set correctly. Right now, my volume is set at 29. That is the highest and loudest I ever play my stereo because after 29, I start sending a clip signal out of my head unit, okay? And that's not a good thing. Uh, most head units, if you set the gain with the volume maxed out, you're already going to be sending a clip signal out from your head unit. So that's why in most gain setting procedures, they say set your volume on your head unit to around 75%. And uh, lo and behold, that's right about where I'm at. Um, I've checked uh, my head unit as far as what volume it does send out a clip signal, and it sends it out at about 30 to 31. So I never go past 29, which is plenty loud, considering I got massive door speakers, tweeters here, everything uh, perfectly dialed in. So I don't need to go past 29. But that's where mine's is set. You need to make sure that you know you don't get into clipping with yours. And you can utilize um, this oscilloscope that I'm about to show you to detect clipping from your head unit. You just basically hook it up uh, to the speaker wires or to the speaker outputs of your deck instead of the speaker outputs uh, to your amp. Same procedure to find when your deck starts clipping. You just start out with a low volume and turn it up until you see the sine wave start to get clipped. And that'll make more sense as I show you how to do it on my subwoofer amp. All right, so something else to note, you wanna make sure that as you set the gain on your subwoofer amplifier, if you do have a bass knob, make sure that it's turned all the way up or you can just unplug it if it's a regular plug-in style. This is wired into your RCA. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is turned all the way up so that that way uh, I set my gains properly. Because the last thing you wanna do again is to set your gain with your bass knob, let's say, you know, halfway and then you set your gains perfectly, and then one day you wanna just bang a little extra hard, and you forgot that you set your gains at the halfway point, and then you crank it up to the max, guess what? You're gonna smell some uh, good old crunchy black voice coils real quick. So wanna make sure to max out your bass knob when you set your gain, so that way you don't send a clip signal down the road. All right, something else you're gonna need is a 40 hertz test tone. You can download uh, test tones on your cell phone. I use this official DB Jams V20. It's a DB Drag Racing Association CD. You can find it online, but this is the official CD for car audio competitions. And uh, not only does it have some pretty awesome music, uh, Digital Drop is the one that I use in a lot of my demo videos for distance tests for my doors. But as you can see, they have sine wanes here and it's recorded at zero dB, okay, which is perfect. So there you go, all the way up to whatever hertz you want. 
Uh, for your test tone, you want to use 40 hertz right there, okay? Now, it's only 30 seconds. You probably need more time than that. So what you want to do is just hit repeat on your deck so that it keeps playing the 40 hertz test tone over and over and over again. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to take care of on the front here. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the back. Okay, so there are a couple things you want to do to prepare. You want to make sure that your gain is turned all the way down, which it already is. Subsonic, uh, I have that set for exactly where I want it already. And I suggest you do that too. If you don't know how to set your subsonic filter, I have other videos on how to properly set up your amp. But just really quick, uh, you know, set it for where it's supposed to be. You know, if you have a ported enclosure that's tuned to 31 hertz, 32 hertz, then set your subsonic for 30 hertz, okay? Uh, bass boost, again, if you're gonna use it, then turn it on now. I recommend not using your bass boost. Obviously, my manufacturer here, Crescendo, says not needed. I would heed that advice, okay? Don't use bass boost, but if you're gonna use it, then you wanna turn it on and set your gain with that on if you're gonna use it, okay? And uh, have your LPF set where you want it also. Just have everything set up as you want it, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and set the gains. Also, you wanna make sure to disconnect your subwoofers because you don't wanna be blaring a 40 hertz tone uh, full tilt when uh, you're setting your gains, especially if you live in a neighborhood. So go ahead and disconnect all of those because you're going to be connecting the leads of the gain or sorry, of the oscilloscope to these. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these disconnected here. All right. So a couple things here with this unit, obviously you want to make sure that it's plugged into a power source and that you turn it on. And then you want to make sure that you're setting it on AC. You got AC, DC, and ground. You are going to be measuring an AC signal. So make sure it's on AC. And then you connect uh, your leads here. Obviously red going to positive, black going to negative. And this is a monoblock amplifier. If you're tuning a subwoofer amplifier, most likely it's monoblock. So it doesn't matter which positive and which negative you connect it to. As far as settings, I got it set to 20 volts here. Um, you can set it to uh, five volts, two volts, obviously. 20 volts is where I have it set to because it's either 10 volts or 20 volts. So um, I set it for 20, uh, let's see here, milliseconds. I'll explain what that is. It'll make more sense once I get it going, but this is how I set it. So 20 volts AC, uh, five milliseconds, and I have it on automatic. And as you can see up in the upper right-hand corner, it's waiting for a signal. I haven't pressed play yet on the head unit. So it's currently not receiving a signal yet. I'm gonna go ahead and press play and then show you what I got here. All right, so I went ahead and pressed play. And as you can see, I have it, uh, I have it set on 29, which is the max volume that I listened to, which is about three quarters of the way up. And I got it looped on a 40 Hertz track. So let's go to the back and uh, see what we got. All right, so right now, as you can see, we got a nice uh, clean sine wave there. Now watch what happens as I bring the gain up, okay? I'm just gonna adjust the gain. Okay, now watch what happens as I go up. So does the sine wave. And then boom, it clips. I turned it up too high, look at the sine wave. So I gotta back it back down a little bit to right about there. Look at that, that simple. <laughs> it's really, really that easy. So let's try it again. I'm gonna turn the gain all the way down, okay? Now I'm gonna slowly start to turn the gain up until you see the sine wave start to clip. Boom, look at that. Clip, 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 clip. Back it down right to about there. Boom, you got a perfect sound wave, uh, no clip signal, maximum gain set for best performance and longevity of your system and your speakers. And the best part is you didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a additional tool that's not needed when a $40 piece of equipment that you can use time and time again for multiple purposes will make it do. Well, there you go, YouTube. I hope this video helped add value to you. If you still don't feel comfortable using uh, your ears to detect distortion and you don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars on an SMD DD1, I tell you what, this is a complete viable option to help you set your gain like a pro to make sure that you keep your equipment safe, you stay out of clipping, and you send clean, distortion-free music to your subs so you can bang longer, harder. And as usual, if this video helped add value to you, please make sure to like, subscribe down there below, turn on those notifications so you don't miss how to take your car audio build to the next level.